Waimati District is known as the centre of the south, being equidistant from Christchurch, Dunedin and Queenstown. Bound by the Waitaki River in the south and the Pariora River in the north and the Hakataramia Valley in the west, the lush paddocks and rolling hills, once a home to a thriving timber industry, now provide nature's finest in pastoral cropping, dairy farming and the growing of fruits and vegetables. The sleepy hamlet of Waimati, home to about 5,000 people these days, was like any other Main Street town in South Canterbury. But that all changed in 1959 when the town played host to a Round the Houses street race for the very first time. Helped by the fact that a young Bruce McLaren drew huge publicity when he won the first event, the Waimati 50 grew and grew, and fast became known as the must-do event on the growing New Zealand motorsport calendar. When the level circuit opened up in nearby Timaru in the mid-60s, the 50s days were numbered and it slowly disappeared, only to be resurrected first in 1991 and then again in 2010. And it's continued to morph into the event we have now. The original Round the Houses street race may be gone, but in its place, four separate races, making the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Series the must-do event for any petrol head or car enthusiast worth his or her salt. There is little doubt that the town comes alive for the whole weekend, with top-class music fueling street parties, kids' entertainment and a true community spirit. The weekend is taken up with four events, culminating in the street sprint. There's the Dunlop Tyres Rally Sprint. The Whitehorse Motors Hill Climb. And the Luke Jewellers Main Street Thunder. Every petrol head straight. Why Maddie? <laughs> to explain the weekend's concept, rally convener Bert Murray. The racing started here in town in 1959. It was a circuit around the, the streets of Waimati. Of course, it hasn't uh, you know, been straightforward for us either here. It's, uh, you know, the days of the little square bales on the, on the side of the street are no longer acceptable. They've had to do the, the right thing and make sure that track is uh, safe for the public to be present here. I guess it's a big pity that we can't have the, um, the racing that we used to have here, but uh, these sprints seem to be still attracting the crowds, and, uh, and I know the drivers love it. Uh, they're just so overwhelming and supportive. Oh, it's huge. It brings a lot of people to the town. Um, it, it's a big buzz. It's so exciting. Um, just all of us, not all of us are motorsport people, really, but um, it makes us want to be and uh, get involved. It's just such a great event. There's four events there, and it's... Uh... It's just a magic form and it brings the racing guys together with the rally guys and it just makes it a spectacle to see. Oh, look, I just love the roads. I think the concept of having a, a hill climb one day, a rally sprint and then a street circuit on the same day on the Sunday is just a fantastic idea and it gets all forms of gravel rallying and tarmac people all together so it's a great concept. I thoroughly enjoyed it last year, particularly the street stage, but uh, yeah, the whole three disciplines, the hill climb, uh, the, the sprint, rally sprint and then finish it off with my favourite, the street circuit. Ask anyone and they'll tell you that Waimati is famous for different things, whether it's the introduction of Wallabies in 1870, the street race or the iconic white horse that appeared on the Hunter Hills in the late 60s. Made from slabs of concrete and a tribute to the work of the Clydesdale horses of the area, it was built by Norman Heyman. And for the purpose of our story, it marks the finish area for the first event of the weekend, the White Horse Motors race to the White Horse Hill Climb. Attracting 68 entries from all over New Zealand and around the world, each driver would get four runs up what some consider to be the best hill climb road in the country. As the hill climb is on a no exit road, the big field was split into two distinct groups, allowing the first group back down the road before the second group started, thus keeping the spectators happy and entertained. Catering for five different classes from 0 to 1300 right up to the unlimited two and four wheel drive, there was something for everyone, even Neville Pettigrew's Corvette. 
I imported it from Beaufort, North Carolina in the States in 2008, uh, mainly because a lot of my friends were dying and I was thinking, I've got to do this, because I've wanted one for 35 years and I have it and it's an absolute weapon, it looks more than I could ever wish for. It's 550 horsepower, so a bit insane on gravel but a lot of fun. Neville's best run netted him 62nd overall with a time of 2.45.16. Talk about a family that plays together stays together, Steve Empson, a Kiwi living in Australia, had made the trip with his father Ralph, driving a car he leased here in New Zealand, an RS2000 Mark II Escort. Empson loved being home and his Waimati experience. They say the car is the star at the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Series and this car, a genuine Escort Mexico driven by Timaru Ford fanatic Mark Taylor was no exception. These cars ruled the roost in the heyday of endurance rallying. Tasmania's Dave Tomo Thompson had made his first appearance at Waimati last year and told everyone that would listen that he'd be back in one of his own cars. He was. Uh, look, I, I honestly think it's probably the most fun car to, to drive here, it's just, it's an awesome car. It, it's old, it's 40 years old, but it's fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> I built a rally car 22 years ago and uh, it was great to be, only owned it for one year. Won the South Australian Championship in it that year and then sold it, bought a house. Um, and Tom has owned it for a fair amount of that time since then. Uh, the car has won three or four Australian championships and stuff with Barry driving it. We've run it for the last two or three years in the Australian Rally Championship under a classic. And yeah, it's, it's a brilliant car. down to the serious or not so serious competition over the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Sprint Series weekend, there was a chance to socialise and blow off a little steam at the Waimati Town and Country Club. And on. That's not bad, 225.1. The brainchild of Rob Aitken, the organising committee chair, the wheel changing competition pitted four person teams against one another. 144.4 Whilst the times weren't enough to have the McLaren Formula One team quaking in their boots, the teams were getting faster and faster. And after the final round, it was the team from Sylvester V8 Performance, led by the G-Man himself, that took the win. Well, you're still, you're still in the big ones, Can't beat it. This is the place to be, why Matty? Best place in the country. Event two of the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Series weekend was making a welcome return after being trialled last year. The Loot Jewelers Main Street Thunder lived up to its name. What time do you reckon? Oh, 10. 10? <laughs> <laughs> Hot rods, sports cars, utes and serious races all turned out. Yeah, there should be smoke. Could be smoke. Oh, I love White Manny, best place ever. Best place, thank you. We're on the main street of White Manny, outside the local police station. You've got to love it. Great event. Wouldn't miss it for the world. We're going to give it a good time down the strip here. It's all good, eh? Every, every petrol head stream. We used to race down here in the middle of the night, illegally. <laughs> the eight second capable rapid performance Nissan from Timaru was there, but only doing demonstration runs, and like everyone else, having a whole heap of fun. The buddy could burn out. Wait for the smoke to clear. 
Even event title sponsor CEO Ken McEwen had caught the bug, taking the firm's car for a run, or two, or three. And why a Mark 1 Cortina? I've always had this sickness, this is my fifth one. <laughs> Here's Luke Jeweler's Main Street Thunder. Glenn Frew took his 500 horsepower bus Mitsubishi to a staggering 9.7 second clocking. This year he was running under exhibition only status, but still pulled off a mind blowing 10.4 second quarter mile. While for most it was about fun, the times were still being recorded, and the second fastest on the night was Graham Sargent in his Holden Commodore GTS with a 12.02 clocking. Using all the advantages of four-wheel drive, a massive turbo and anti-lag, Kieran Pratt fired his Mitsubishi Evo down Waimati's Main Street in 11.68 seconds to take the Luke Jewellers Main Street Thunder for 2012. So officially fastest on the Main Street of Waimati, Kieran Pratt in the Mitsubishi from Graham Sargent in the Holden and Joshua Jamison in the Subaru Legacy. Back at the White Horse Hill Climb, there were some that were making hard work of it, especially in this dried up river ford. 29th overall in a time of 2.22.81 was Cromwell's Dennis Beatty in his Mitsubishi Evo. Tony Johnson was next in his 302 V8 Cleveland powered Ford Capri, another that had learnt the road and the conditions. 28th, 222.64. By late afternoon, the White Horse Motors hill climb road had been swept clean and the times were coming down. It was time to get serious. Mark Lawton taking his V8 Avenger to 30th place overall. There is Trans-Tasman bragging rights on the table here as well. The Pullman Avenger with a uh, five, I think it's five litre uh, V8 in it. So it's sort of, a, yeah, it's, it's a bit hard to get used to, but it's, it's quite a good jigger and um, it appears to be very reliable at the moment. It's not my car, so if I bend it, I own it, so I've got to be very, very careful. Aussie multiple rally champion, factory rally art Mitsubishi driver and new author Ross Dunkerton beat car owner Lawton in his own car. The Rovenger coming through in 2.22.57. As the runs continued into the afternoon, everyone was interested to see who would beat who. Michael McMillan beat half the field in 2.22.51 in his Toyota Celica four-wheel drive. Greymouth's Tracy Mann was back after a bit of a layoff in his Mazda RX-7. His best run at 2.22.35, good enough for 25th. Second of our overseas visitors to crack the top 30, Queensland's Keith Callanan. The big man threw in 24th in the escort. Alan Turner's racing motto must be anywhere, anytime. From the ITM 400 at Hamilton to the gravel of Waimati, 23rd overall for the day. With Dad driving the Escort, that left number one son Daniel in the Monaro. Family pride on the line and the kid went quicker. 219 pays 221. After a mishap last year, the number one job was just keeping it on the road. Deborah Kibble has nothing to prove. She was the first woman to win a national rally championships in this country. And as we see from our model garage on board, she still has the pace. She lost none of her speed. And as always, she was first of the girls in 21st. Internationally renowned rally co-driver and possibly the most travelled man in New Zealand motorsport, Jeff Judd, shook off mechanical issues in round two to take 20th in 2.19.31. 
Merv Hatcher had his Mitsubishi Starion percolating on the crests and brows of the White Horse Motors hill climb. His best time of 2.18.72, good enough for 19th place. Double driving the extinct Mitsubishi was Aussie by way of Scotland, Stu Reid. It is different because in your own car the seating positions etc are all where you would like it so the idea is just to slot in and don't scratch it and give it back in one piece. He beat the car's lady owner and salvaged some Aussie pride. One of the unluckiest drivers was New Zealand rally sprint and motor racing legend Trevor Parmenta in one of his special hybrids. He suffered an engine failure and a fire in round two, but his round one time good enough for 17th overall. Crummel's Paul Beatty was next in his Mitsubishi Evo 7. Fast out of the blocks, he improved his first run of 2.31 down to a 2.17.47 and 16th. Wayne Muckle was driving an exotic 323 BFMR Group A Mazda. At home in all forms of the sport, the Ashburton man came home in 15th to 17.35. Dylan Cameron's hang it all out and never die wondering style stunned the crowds at the White Horse Motors hill climb. His performances were stunning as well, peddling the DX Corolla to 14th overall, beating plenty of four-wheel drives in the process. Shane Rogers' little half-spin in round one didn't affect his later performances, the Timaru man throwing the Subaru all over the road. Past Mainland Series champion, past multi-rally extreme series champion, an all-round good guy, Derek Asin brought his Nissan-powered Mark II Escort out to play at Waimati. <laughs> He won Class 2 with a best time of 2.15.26 and finished 12th overall. Last year he bought his Golf Oils Mitsubishi Evo, but judging by the crowd's reaction, he'd made the right choice in cars this year. After four runs, Sam Hoare from Fairley would finish just outside the top 10 in his Lancer, 11th overall, saving his best performance for last in a 2.15.26 on his fourth run. Down to the business end now and just squeaking into the top 10 with a 2.14.6 was Leaston's Phil Sloan. A cautious start meant that when the roads began to be swept, Sloan was ready to pounce. Richard Baddock was the fastest Subaru pilot, just pipping Sloan for the honour. His mean-looking WRX proving that beauty was more than skin deep. If you weren't driving a car that began with the letter M from here on in, you weren't in it. Mitsubishi's dominated the top ten with New Zealand's most popular choice for rallies, filling six of the remaining spots. Paul Squire sharing eight with Baddock. First of the giant killing performances of the weekend came from Christchurch's Marcus Van Klink. He threw his 30-plus-year-old two-wheel drive Mazda RX-7 around the four-kilometre Whitehorse Motors hill climb in 2 minutes 13.7 seconds. Good enough for seventh overall. With the car virtually a shell, with gearbox and diff parts scattered around the shop days before, it was a wonder Bert Murray even made the start line. But driving the ex-Neil Orport championship winning main freight RX-7, that's exactly what he did. In a battle with fellow Mazda pilot Clinky all day, the past classic champion beat the current one at Waimati. Part of the appeal of the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT series that each and every year they crown an overall champion. That man last year was Craig Malloy from Dunedin. Driving the ex-Mason Ramsey Evo, he was the first to go sub 210. Amaru Scott Simpson was fourth overall, but that doesn't tell the whole story. Fastest overall after two of the four rounds with the 2.11 and change, the times kept dropping. It's just that his competition was flying as well. His 2.07.81 kept him in the hunt, but only just. Timaru's Paul Dixon is like a fine wine. He gets better with age. The same can be said about his car as well. His Mitsubishi Evo 3 RS, older than some of the competitors. After a full day's racing, the top three all within a half a second of each other. Third overall for Paul at 207.60. If Scott Simpson had been fast in round two, Scott Jones scooped the pool in round three. But whether he couldn't quite hold his nerve or his earlier pace, he would come up one short at the White Horse Motors hill climb. He would finish a fighting second in 2 minutes 7.25 seconds in the Rally Tyres Mitsubishi. There would be nothing in it at the top.
is a saying in motorsport that goes, I'd rather be lucky than good. Well, if you can have both, that makes the job a little easier. A huge improvement for Steve Wellington from Dunedin between the third and fourth round saw the Southern man claim the first win of the weekend. He would take out the White Horse Motors race to the White Horse Hill Climb and claim maximum points for the event. The first at the McEwen Petroleum Waimati 50 GT Series for the weekend. Oh, it was pretty good actually, yeah. A lot, of, a lot of shingle on the road for a start, but sort of once it swept off, no, real good. Yeah, the last run all came together and we didn't make any mistakes and just um, tidied everything that we um, found to make mistakes. And um, yeah, look, you could throw a blanket over everyone if, you know, the top five guys, it was, you know, a second in it and uh, yeah, there were just tents in it. So that, that last run was relatively committed and um, yeah, just didn't make too many mistakes. So it was brilliant. So it is Steve Wellington claiming first blood at Waimati from Scott Jones and Paul Dixon. Plenty more to come from Waimati in part two next week. We'll bring you the Dunlop Rally Sprint and the big one, the Street Sprints.